Hi, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and this Chalk Talk goes out to all my subscribers on YouTube. Thanks for subscribing. I'm glad you liked my Chalk Talk so much. Just remember, if you'd like to receive a new one every single week, you can subscribe to ecgacademy.com, and I'll go over strips from basic to advanced and make you into an ECG expert. Anyway, this was a great strip that I found on the telemetry unit. In fact, I was asked to do a consult on this patient for bradycardia. And when you look at this top strip, you can see that indeed the heart rate is pretty slow. It's so slow, in fact, we have to kind of measure time instead of counting off rates. So one, two, three, four, that's one second. One, two, three, four, that would be two seconds, which would make 30 beats per minute. So it's really about 35 beats per minute or so. And what the nurse wrote was heart rate down to 33, and she called it a junctional rhythm. Well, just remember Tulo's Law. Don't ever believe anything you read on a rhythm strip unless you wrote it yourself. But when we look at these QRS complexes, they do look a little bit wide, but not excessively. And when you look in front of them, there it does seem to be a small deflection in front of each QRS complex. In fact, the nurse was kind enough to circle this one. And so I'm not sure why it would be a junctional rhythm. For a junctional rhythm, you'd expect to not see any atrial activity prior to the QRS complex. You'd expect the P wave to be in the middle of the QRS or just after it. But there do appear to be P waves pretty consistently here. And you'd be tempted to call this sinus bradycardia at 35 beats per minute. But let's take a look at another rhythm strip. And what's the difference between this one and this one? Do you notice any difference in the way it looks? It's the same lead, but what they did was they increased the gain. They turned up the volume. And so this QRS complex is much bigger. And so the P wave is much bigger. In fact, the nurse was very nice to circle it for you. She circled all these P waves here so that you can pay attention to what she thought was important. She called it sinus bradycardia, 33 beats per minute with a PVC. Well, where's the PVC? This is the PVC, and I, I agree with that. You have a sinus P wave and a QRS, and then there seems to be no P wave preceding this beat. In fact, what you do see is a retrograde P wave in the middle of the ST segment. So I agree, this is a PVC. Then there's a compensatory pause, and then you have this P wave and this slow rhythm coming in at a rather slow rate. But if you notice, she said it lasted six seconds, and then the heart rate increased to 62. Well, look at the end of this strip. At the end of the strip, you have the same P waves occurring. But if we take out some calipers and measure the P to P interval, move the caliper to a heavy line and count off its... 300, 150, 175, 60. So yes, indeed, it's about 60 beats per minute here. But what happened before this? Well, see, what you need to do is pay attention to the ST segments. If you look at this ST segment and this one over here and compare it with this one, what do you see? It should stick out like a sore thumb right there. That looks like a P wave to me. And so does this. And in fact, if you look at these ST segments, I think there's a high frequency deflection here that was missed because the gain was too low. Now the corollary to Tulo's rule, which is that you should never believe anything you read on an ECG, is that if anything is circled, it usually distracts you from the important part. And that's just it. These little red pen circles here distract you from this part, which is the important part. In fact, what you have here is non-conducted atrial bigeminy. You remember bigeminy is a situation where every other beat is premature. You have a normal P wave, and then you have a PAC. And then you have a normal P wave, and you have a PAC. And that's what's happening up here, except it's happening throughout the whole strip, and it makes it appear like there's sinus bradycardia going on. But in fact, when you measure back from this P wave, and you know what the normal P to P interval is here, that means the sinus node was reset at this moment. And so this P wave got into the sinus node, managed to reset it, and then the sinus node fired pretty much on time right here. So in fact, the sinus node is in pretty good shape. And this slow heartbeat is just simply because of these non-conducted APCs. I like to say non-conducted rather than blocked because the AV node is supposed to prevent excessively rapid signals from getting to the ventricle. That's how it protects the ventricle against going too rapidly. So there's a certain refractory period after the AV node conducts this signal, and that AV node is unable to pass this P wave down until the refractoriness resolves. We talk about this in the basic section in the AV block in quite a bit of detail. So if you're interested in this, you can log on to ecgacademy.com and look into subscribing to the basic section where there's almost 10 hours of video lessons, which will give you a very solid foundation on evaluating almost any arrhythmia you might come across.
Well, I hope this chalk talk was enlightening and give you a little bit more insight into what you need to be looking for in these rhythm strips, because I do want to turn you into an ECG expert. So for the ECG Academy, this is Dr. Nick. Thanks for watching.